Hey everybody, welcome to chapter 5 where we start talking about populations. Uh, today we're going to talk about section 1 which is how populations grow. By the end of this lesson you should be able to do all these things as well as know all these key terms. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, ask at the end. Alright, here we go. So a population, right? When we're talking about populations, um, we're talking about literally, if we think back to chapter four in our definition, right? How many organisms there are in one place at one time of a certain species? Um, so we can count populations, right? How many organisms are present? Um, so a population, right? They usually span geographic ranges, right? Which is where it is found. So on the earth, uh, we have different populations and different ranges, okay? We may have a population of elk uh, in Montana and they may come all the way down through the Midwest into the mountains. All right, so when we talk about population, we have two important characteristics. We have density and distribution. So population density refers to how many organisms are in one area, right? So the number of organisms in an area. Um, so if we look at these two examples here, if we take a pond, right, we may have a high density of fish, right? There's looks like there's probably at least 15 fish in this little pond, uh, all in one area, right? So we may have a lot of fish in one area, um, so a, a pretty dense population. Whereas we might just have two two ducks on a pond, right? Not a very dense population. So population density uh, is the amount of organisms over the area. All right, and this is different than population distribution which is how this density or how these organisms are distributed throughout an environment, throughout an ecosystem. All right, so we could have several types of distributions. The first one could is what's called random, right? So these wildflowers in this field are a random distribution. We have some red, some yellow, some blue, some purples, right? And they're just randomly dispersed. Um, we could have what's called a uniform distribution. Uh, just like this planted pine forest, okay? So in a uniform distribution, everything's nice and even, pretty spread out in a consistent pattern. Um, so whether it's pine trees like this that were actually planted as like a planted pine forest, um, or organisms line up to like follow each other, like March of the Penguins, uniform. The third one is what's called clumped. And one of my favorite examples of a clumped distribution uh, is like a bait ball, it's called, or a ball of fish, right? And you've seen this hopefully before in different different videos of underwater fish. Uh, they travel in a big school like this, clumped together uh, to have safety in numbers. All right, so population can have density and it can have distribution. All right, and the last part is called age structure. Now, age structure is a really important part of population uh, because it brings us into our next subject where we talk about how populations can grow and how they can change. So age structure is actually the, the characteristics of the organisms in a population we're talking about. And it includes the number of male organisms, right? It includes the number of female organisms, uh, as well as the ages um, of these organisms, right? And a great way, and we'll be talking about these guys a lot today, to talk about it is, is let's take an example of deer, right? We all know what white-tailed deer are. We see them all the time. Um, age structure would be important in a population because we need to know a, how many males and how many females there are, right? Uh, because that's important for mating, particularly with animals. Not so much with plants, but with animals. You have to have a male and a female to be able to create a new organism. Um, and also females, right, are the only ones uh, that can carry uh, that new organism, that, that infant. Um, so the number of males and females is going to dictate population. Their ages are also going to be really important because only organisms of a certain age can mate, right? Like this little fawn is not going to be of mating age, uh, usually that first year, that first mating season. It'll take another year to become of mating age. Uh, sometimes you have organisms like elephants, right? Some elephants can't mate till they're like 20 years old, okay? So males, females, and age are all part of age structure, which again is a characteristic uh, which is important to population because it determines how a population is going to grow or change. All right, the next part of population is going to be, like we said, population growth. Okay, so populations can grow and populations can change over time. And there's four factors which have a really large effect. The first two are what's called immigration and emigration. 
So immigration is a word you've probably heard about, usually in the news or in history class. Uh, and immigration means when, when an organism's coming into a new place. Okay, and emigration is when an organism is leaving or going out of a different place. So if you look at these ducks, right, this one duck is emigrating from population one, and he's immigrating to population two, right? And this obviously plays a huge role in population growth, because if organisms are leaving a place, that population is going to go down, right? So emigration results in population drop, and immigration results in population increase, going up. So the other two factors are what's the birth rate and the death rate. Okay, so the birth rate obviously is the amount of new organisms that are born uh, for a given population. Obviously, if we have a very high birth rate or a lot of organisms being born, the population is going to go up. Okay, uh, so right, if we look at, we continue with our deer here. If we have a lot of deer that are being born, the birth rate, if the that right, that's a high birth rate, the population is going to go up. Uh, death rate, on the other hand, is when organisms die, okay? And there's a lot of factors that can affect, like, our friends, the deer, uh, that will increase the death rate. So there may be a lot of hunters uh, one season, maybe a lot of predation by wolves and coyotes. Maybe there'll be a really bad winter and no food, okay? All these things are going to make the death rate increase, which causes the population to go down, okay? So these Four factors are what's going to control growth, okay? Uh, so there's two types of population growth that we're going to talk about, and this is where it gets a little mathy, so uh, be careful, right? So we're talking about our friend the deer here still, okay? Uh, and the first type of growth we're going to see is exponential, okay? So if you've ever heard of an exponential equation, uh, it's one that looks like this, right? It starts out slow, so on the x-axis we have time, y-axis, we have the number of organisms or the population size. So in the beginning, right, the slope or the rate, right, the, of population growth is pretty slow. It gets a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Then at a certain point, it starts increasing exponentially until it's almost climbing straight up. All right. This is exponential growth, right? It would be as if we started with four organisms. That doubled to 8, 16, 32, 64. 128 and just kept growing and growing and growing and eventually even though it starts out slow we have a huge population okay so exponential growth is usually found uh, when we have new organisms or or a beginning of a community okay let's think about it if we introduced two deer a male and a female uh, into a giant corn farm a cornfield right they're going to start they're going to have no predators they're going to have plenty of food, and they're going to start growing. And like we said, two deer turns into four, four into eight, eight and 16, right? So this is going to increase. Uh, but if we think about it, right, we don't have a, an earth that's completely populated by deer, just billions of deer running around, because at some point, right, our ecosystem can only hold so many organisms. So the important thing about exponential growth is that it's very fast, right, but it cannot be withheld forever, right? It does end rather quickly, too. Okay, um, so if we don't just have uh, exponential growth, right, we have to have another type, okay, and this is called logistic growth. So a logistic growth or a log curve is one like that looks like this, right, looks kind of like an S. So similar to exponential, okay, it starts, increases, but instead of exponential that increase straight up, right, we see this one actually flattens out and then starts to taper off and almost flat. There's no growth, okay. So the logistic curve is the one that we actually see in most organisms, all right? Uh, and this is, to talk about the logistic curve, we have to talk about carrying capacity, okay? And the carrying capacity is the maximum number uh, of organisms that one uh, habitat or one place can hold, okay? So when we reach this carrying capacity, is when the growth rate starts to determine, slow down and become zero, right? So the other important thing about the carrying capacity is it determines the growth rate, okay? Uh, and the carrying capacity uh, is made up of t all different types of things, um, things that we talked about, especially in chapter three, right? When we were talking about the niche and a niche for an organism, we talked about all the different resources an organism needs to survive, so food water, space, sunlight, um, shelter, okay? 
there's only going to be so many resources uh, for an organism to survive. So we said the carrying capacity determines growth rate, and it does this because um, habitats have limited resources, right? Niches have limited resources. Um, so if we look here at this picture of all these deer, right, this is definitely going to be uh, above the carrying capacity for these deer. We see they're super overcrowded. There's not much food. You can see a little bit here. Right, so it's a pretty tough winter. There's not going to be a lot of food to go around for these guys. Probably not a lot of water. We're going to die. But sorry, we're not going to die. The deer are going to die. So like we said, the carrying capacity determines the growth rate. Right, It determines how big a population is going to become. So we can generalize that this, right? If the carrying capacity is up here, right, we can only have this high a number of organisms. The growth rate is going to slow or decrease as it reaches the carrying capacity. If for some reason a population of like deer were to become above the carrying capacity, like up here, we're actually going to have a negative growth rate, which would mean the death rate is going to be higher, and it's going to come back down lower below this carrying capacity. So again, growth in population is going to change, and it's usually going to follow one of these two curves, right? Exponential is usually going to be at the beginning of a population growth, uh, when we have something starting life right away, and logistics is going to be going the other way. All right, so again, that's population growth, right? It's going to change. We're going to have both types of these curves here, uh, and logistic is usually what they end up looking like when a population flattens out and it gets to its carrying capacity. All right, cool. So we're going to go over this again. Don't worry, but review it. Make sure you know the vocab, very vocab heavy in this lesson, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, tweet at me, and uh, see you later, kids. Have a good one. Peace out.